So I'm Pedro Mendes. I'm at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine, also known as Yukon Health. Um, although part of the work I'm going to um, talk about, or most of the work I'm going to talk about, was actually carried out at the University of Manchester in the UK when I was there. Um, so this is about um, Copasi, which is a, a software for simulation of biochemical networks. Uh, it's a simulator and how we used Condor to um, you know, turn it into high throughput mode. Um, so Copasi is actually mostly used as a standalone application. Um, it's really written, directed at biologists and chemists, <clears throat> basically trying to abstract as much as possible um, the mathematics and computing behind it. Um, so it really is directed at people who should not need to be specialists in order to, um, to run simulations. Obviously being specialists will help them as well, but, but not necessarily. So because of that, it's mostly run as a standalone application as a, uh, with a GUI front end. Uh, and it's portable, runs on, on various um, operating systems, et cetera. It's uh, by now is very well established as a uh, large user base. Um, the map below shows you the various laboratories that have published papers with Copasi. We, we'd like to pinpoint them on the map. Um, it, by now, the map basically just shows where, where money is located in the world, because that's where research happens anyway. Um, and also another metric that we that we track, because by the way, we don't uh, track the usage of the software since it's not server based. Um, we do track downloads, but that is not too informative. People can download things without using it. So we really track is the number of papers that publish uh, research that was carried out with Copasi. And that's now floating around the, about 100 per, per year. I mean, in 2019 went, went up quite a bit, but then 2020 seems to have been a bad year. I think this year we'll go back again a little bit uh, further up. So essentially for most of the research published with Copasi, it is used as a standalone application and everything runs on, on a single laptop or desktop. And most of the, many of the applications, um, things are fast enough that that's a perfectly good um, mode of, of uh, operation. Um, it does have a number of uh, simulation types and analysis. I'm just listing here. I'm not going to go through any of these in detail, but it's useful to talk about some of them. Um, the most of the units of computation are either solving differential equations, either ODEs or stochastic differential equations, or running uh, so-called stochastic simulation algorithm, which is the Gillespie algorithm. Some of you may know it's a it's a continuous time discrete event type simulation. Um, Discrete events can also be added onto the ODEs or SDs as well. Uh, we do calculate a number of other analyses like steady state analysis, stability, uh, parameter scans, or parameter, people also call it parameter sweeps, as you will see that will play a big role here. Um, sensitivity analysis um, and various other things, uh, the Apunov exponents, cross sections, et cetera, all sorts of nonlinear dynamics. Um, and some of these things are, oh, and I forgot to mention, one of the main uses is parameter estimation. Uh, a lot of users um, use our software really just to estimate kinetic parameters. Uh, and that's done through uh, least squares using a big um, menu of possible optimization algorithms that we have included or various types uh, from gradient descent type algorithms to simulated annealing, genetic algorithms and particle swarms, things of that kind. So when I was at the University of Manchester uh, in the School of Engineering or Faculty of Engineering as it's called, um, Engineering and Physical Sciences, um, we had uh, set up a, a condor pool back in around 2009. Uh, and this was led by Ian, Ian Cotton, who was uh, also in my institute where we actually had pioneered this with a very smaller pool just using uh, workstations. Uh, one of the things that Ian um, was was really good at was he, he, he was good at convincing the faculty that all of the computer terminals that we were using, um, that students were using, that overnight they are basically um, idle and we could turn them all into a condor pool. So he set up a system where these machines would during the day be being used by students. If they're idle uh, after a, a certain amount of time, they actually reboot themselves and add themselves to condor but then the students can interrupt that at any moment. But uh, overnight, they are all available. And that's about 3,000 CPU cores at, at the stage when I left. That was the number. It's possibly more now. 
Um, and then during the day, we had a few machines dedicated to be there on the pool. So they would be uh, processing was slower during the day, about 100 machines. Some of them were, were um, several large multi-core machines, but not all. Um, so essentially, we had a, a nice um, system. And um, with Copasi, we were really keen to try and use this as much as possible. So we actually were some of the very first adopters of, the, of this pool. At some point, the people in astronomy and so on discovered it, and uh, they were basically flooding um, all the cores. So I decided to start using Copasi with Condor. And what can you do? Well, you can um, look at those um, operations that essentially run many times the same um, units that are independent, such as parameter sweeps that have to run many simulations with different parameterizations, um, or um, repeating stochastic simulations, which is basically each one is the same initial conditions, but because they're stochastic, you want to repeat them to draw a distribution, time-dependent distribution, et cetera, things like that. So how do you do that? Well, obviously, you have to um, do the following. The first step is to create a model in Copasi and the GUI, and you save it. Um, you actually have to create a report file because uh, when you run it from the command line, there's no interaction. Uh, the software just writes all results to a report file. Um, I, I forgot to mention that there is a, a command line version that just runs uh, the simulations essentially that the files indicate. There's no interaction other than that. Uh, so in the GUI, you have to set up everything such that you will be running this, the operation in, um, um, in a um, remote mode. And then um, you have to save this, and then you have to prepare uh, a Condor, HD Condor uh, job specification file, which uh, there's a little example down there. Uh, we actually do have Copasi for various um, architectures. So our Condor pool was multi-architecture. So we also had requirements in there, what, what types of, um, of the executables we could use and what machines could be available. We could, we could try to use all of them, in fact. Then we have to prepare some output directory, submit to HT Condor, uh, then results come back, and then we have to edit the results such that they match the required order. So for example, if I was originally going to do a parameter sweep, uh, changing three parameters and 10 values each of them, and it's hierarchical, then you basically have a certain, you expect a certain order in the output. And um, downstream processing may depend on that, on that order. So what we do with, when sending the software to Condor is that it was important to also um, restructure um, the output such that it comes in the right order, the expected order. Um, and then sometimes you want to create some summary plots, etc. So this was all done manually for a while. Um, then comes uh, Ed Kent. Uh, Ed was a PhD student that came to my group and he was very, uh, very, very good um, computer scientist. In fact, uh, his background was in computer science. And, and he basically said, well, I can do something and automate all of this. So he created a package which we called Condor Copasi. By the way, this started at the time when I think it was still called Condor rather than HT Condor. Um, and and what, what that software does, it's basically a web-based uh, package um, that essentially runs on a dedicated Condor pool. Well, it, it has to have access to a submit node. Uh, it self-registers users. Uh, the users basically just add a um, little bit of information so they can be contacted by email and that we can decide who can access this or not. Um, and then the software, the backend is written in Python and basically uh, what it does is that it takes an input file, a Copasi input file. It actually does all of that manual processing of setting the right reports and splitting that file into many files. If we're going to um, um, parallelize, of course, you want to uh, divide the, the jobs into various bits, and then also does all of the um, reassembling of the output and creating and creates also some other plots. Now that software is um, open, it's on GitHub, other people have installed it. In fact, we knew about a number of other groups that have used it, uh, including some in industry, um, but also uh, um, various other places. At, at, at academia. Uh, we did publish a paper, so this is all published in back, back in 2012. Um, and just to give you a little bit, uh, I mean, this, this is probably not, not so great for this audience. This is what I show normally to the people who don't know about uh, high process, uh, high throughput computing, but uh, that's basically how this, this goes. The user just sends one file to the server. Everything else happens behind their back. And eventually they get the, the result files back from the server. Um, I think I've gone through most of this actually. Um, 
Oh, uh, there's one part that I didn't mention, which is what at some point Ed figured out that there would be good to try and balance the load on 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 the various cores. So he did a bit. He added a little bit of of um, load balancing or or trying to measure the speed of each subtask so that you optimize that. And I'll talk about that in a in a slide or two uh, in more detail. Um, so other than that, uh, basically at the end the results the many. Uh, the results can be several files, so they all get zipped and the user gets sent an email that says, so you can go to this link and download your results. They can also go to, to log into the software and check what's the process, uh, if it's being processed or if it's waiting, etc. Now the number of tasks that we've added, so these are specific tasks that the software carries out. It's not all of the functionality of Kupazi, it's only the things that we found easy to put frame into a high throughput um, uh, mode. And that one, as I mentioned, is stochastic simulation repeats. That's very simple. It's basically running the same thing over and over. Um, and then at the end, you do some um, processing because you want to calculate distributions. So for every time point, you can do, you can draw the whole distribution there and calculate standard deviations, etc. cetera. Um, parameter scans, parameter sweeps, these are also very um, obvious. Uh, they include also repeats. The Copazi has a very uh, nice way of allowing you to specify combination of changing things regularly in a regular grid, which is what we call a parameter sweep, uh, sampling values from within a distribution. So a parameter can take random values uh, according to some distribution uh, or repeating things. So you can basically nest each of these inside each other. So it can be complicated um, processing. There's a... Um, an approach which is uh, for optimization of sensitivity coefficients. This is an approach of trying to um, find out about the global sensitivity of a model. Global sensitivity analysis is an approach we developed earlier on, where you ask for the maximum and minimum possible sensitivity for each parameter in the model, given that all parameters can change within a large uh, interval. So that's basically using optimization algorithms, and it's done by for each parameter in your model, you have to run a maximization and a minimization minimum. So if you have a model with uh, 20 parameters, you have to run 40 optimizations essentially, which is each one of them of course are independent. Um, you can do parameter estimation and because we have many different algorithms and some of them are stochastic, um, you may want to repeat them. So you don't want to run a genetic algorithm once, you may want to run it with random starts at um, you know maybe 10 or 50 times, uh, so that is also allowed very easily. Um, same thing with optimizations, because software can also allow you to optimize any arbitrary function, not just doing parameter estimation. And then finally, you can do parameter estimation with all the algorithms. So the user specifies a problem, and rather than picking one algorithm to solve the problem, you can say, well, try it with all the algorithms. So each process then runs a different um, minimization using a different algorithm can sometimes be useful when you don't know which one is going to work best. So the front end looks a bit like this. So it's essentially a very simple page where the user has to upload the file and give it a job name. And you know, basically say, depending on the functions, uh, for example, in the parameter estimation repeat, you have to say how many repeats you want. Um, there may be some extra files needed, etc. So it's a very simple page that they have to fill in. And then um, here are some of the types of results. So I'm showing here in this um, fancy plot, this is a stochastic, a stochastic simulation, which was repeated, I think in this case, a million times. And the distribution you have in sh uh, shaded is the one standard deviation of that distribution, the time dependent distribution. So you can see what areas, what parts of time are more variable. Uh, underneath is a global sensitivity optimization where basically for each parameter here, you show the minimum and the maximum sensitivity that the model has towards that parameter or that the uh, output variable has towards that parameter. Um, and so it is a nice way of allowing users who don't need to know this um, computing approach and of course would be completely intimidated by Condor um, to have them be enable them to use um, high, uh, throughput computing. Now, just to mention the load balancing, which was um, basically the only real bit of research that Ed had to do in this, was to ask the question, so if I have a million um, a parameter sweep with million um, steps, how do I do this? Do I submit a million jobs, each one doing only one step? Do I submit um, 
100 jobs, each one doing 100,000 uh, steps of this, uh, sorry, uh, 100 jobs, each one doing 10,000 steps of this. How do you partition it and how, is, how, would, be, how did, would it be optimal? Of course, if you have 3,000 cores, you could think that you'd just chunk it in 3,000 if, if you could own the, the pool yourself for a while, that could be one approach. And uh, of course, um, it, may, it may, may be not optimal actually, depending on, on the jobs you're running. So what he studied was how, um, this is a plot that shows you the, um, the time that the, um, that the job takes to run. Actually the, yes, the time that a single job takes to run versus the wall clock time that you will get. And this is the same task. So in this case, that means this, uh, this job takes a long time to run, uh, about a thousand minutes. That means that it's running many, many, it's, it's basically running many units of, uh, of computing there. And of course, if you, and, and because it runs so long, you are only going to need a few CPUs. So you don't really get a lot of optimization because you're running basically everything in one or two cores. So if you start decreasing that time, basically meaning increasing the number of, of, of jobs, you more or less get a linear approximation, linear in, uh, increase as you would expect. However, at some point you start getting uh, overhead. Over here, you start getting overhead. Basically these jobs are now too short to, be, uh, to accelerate anything. So you're gonna spend too much time submitting, transferring files, reassembling data, et cetera. So we found out that the ideal time was around jobs that take around 15 minutes. Uh, if they're shorter than that, we actually don't gain too much. At some point you actually lose, you, you end up spending more time in the, in the pool than, than you would be um, just running it on one, on, on, a, on a much, well, not on one if you have a million jobs, but certainly on, on a lot less than, than the number of cores you have. So we found out that the optimal is around 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, this was specific to the Condor pool and this would this picture will change or at least the scale will change uh, depending on your pool and, and what is the typical usage it has. So this is a real world test. This was run in the net production system that is having other uh, users running as well, competing jobs, et cetera. So the software has a, a parameter that uh, the uh, administrator who installs it can change, which is what's the ideal um, size of a job? What's the ideal time for a job? And, and then what the software does is that when you submit a job um, that has many units, it runs one of the units to try and assess how long it takes. If it takes more than this optimal time, it just submits one, um, one job per unit of computation. If it's less than that, it submits as many in one chunk that more or less takes ends up taking the, the, that amount of time. Um, the user also can click a button and say, "I don't don't bother wasting time doing this because if you have if you know you're going to run a simulation that takes an hour, uh, you don't want it to spend an hour just testing how fast it goes. You're actually better off using that hour already to run a, a few of them." Um, okay, so now moving to the present. I mean, actually, Ed started this. He uh, decided to then uh, use Bosco and, and not just be um, dependent on Condor, but allowing um, this process to run on a number of other systems, you know, such as Slurms or SunGrid engines, et cetera. Um, and, but that eventually got stale, the code, the uh, Python backend, many packages updated, eventually Ed got a job and left my group. And so this basically became a little bit of uh, software rot. Um, and now Hassan Beg in my group is joined last year and we started uh, reviving this process and basically converting to new versions of Django and Python 3. And in the meantime, also new versions of Bosco and Condor. So we are still in the process of fixing this, but it's essentially a similar thing, but now it allows you to um, run on different other um, queue managers and including also AWS, where you basically, you just start up a, a Condor cluster on AWS, run things there, and then you shut it down and, and come back. And um, we are also going to add a new few more um, use cases, a few more tasks. Uh, this one here, uh, there's not much to, to spend with the, with the equations here. This was from another um, presentation, but it's called profile likelihood. So you basically draw, uh, when you do a parameter estimation, you estimate values for let's say 20 parameters. You want to know how identifiable each one of them is, that is, can you really, is that value really well determined or could it be very different? And uh, one good way of uh, assessing that 
is calling is creating these likelihood profiles, uh, one one dimensional likelihood profiles. And what you do is, you fix that single parameter that you're studying, and now and you set it at different values. So you essentially do a parameter sweep for that parameter, and for each value of that it takes, you run a whole parameter estimation of the remaining n minus one parameters, and you note what is the sum of squares or the likelihood or whatever uh, metric you're using, and essentially you trace. How, how that changes as the parameter is changing value from the optimal one. And you do that for all the parameters. So if you can imagine, this is very um, con time consuming. This is an, uh, um, an example of what you get in the up in, at the end. So here with a star, you have marked the optimal parameter value. And now in this case, we run one, two, three, four, five, six, basically 12 simulations, essentially 12 values of that parameter. So Sorry, Andrew, we, you have two minutes left. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is my last slide, so it's working out. Thanks. So we change the parameter, we make it a different value and run the parameter estimation again. And that's the best sum of squares you get now. And then you change it again and you get that value. And in this case, this parameter has a nice value around the value we determined. This actually means that it's very well determined. Um, this parameter here, it's not. Uh, it's very shallow around the optimal value. In fact, if you change that optimal value, few orders of magnitude, you don't get much change unless you get to some point. So this one is not really very well determined um, on one end. At that end, it's so you know it can the parameter cannot be larger than than this region here. But so you gain a lot of information. But as you can imagine, there's um, a large number of simulations. So if you're doing um, k steps and you have n parameters, it's k times n optimizations, which again is k times n independent jobs that can be run easily. So the idea is to have this as, a, as an, another task. The user just has to submit the parameter estimation file. Um, and then the software would automatically run all the processes and return this, these images already. So um, coming to my end, uh, I'd like to acknowledge a number of people, uh, definitely at Kent, who wrote the original software um, at, at Manchester, and Hassan Beg now in my group here at UConn Health. A um, couple of collaborators uh, that are now at the University of Virginia, Stephen Hoops and Brian Klan also helped a little bit with uh, this new version, Cloud Copazi. Uh, of course, the Copazi team, which is um, multi-institution international collaboration between my group, uh, Stephen Hoops group in Virginia, and the group of Ursula Kummer in Heidelberg. Um, and funding, uh, Ed was, had a grant from the BBSRC and EPSERC in the UK. Um, Copazi has been funded by an R01 for a number of years here in the US, and now it's funded by an R24 mechanism from NIH. It's a resource grant, uh, basically funds Copazi and a sister application simulation tool called VCell um, from our colleagues here at UConn Health as well. And um, that's it. Thank you very much.